Welcome one and all. I'm Mark Passio of whatonearthishappening.com. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the Other Perspectives of Reality conference. I want to thank Nuria and all of the other great organizers for inviting me to be a part of the event here today. My presentation for today is entitled Worldview Violence and the Real Pandemics. So let's jump right into this presentation. My presentation today is not really for the total beginner to my work. If you're totally new to my work, I don't recommend starting here because uh, it's going to build on a lot of other things that I've talked about throughout the body of my work. I would really suggest for the beginner to go to my website, whatonearthishappening.com, and to start at the podcast section, which begins with audio podcasts and then eventually transitions to video podcasts. And I would recommend that you take those podcasts in order at your own pace, and you will see uh, a new worldview emerge for you, and that's how you'll get the maximum benefit of the material that I teach. So for those who are going to be hearing this presentation today, I say to those who are easily offended, uh, a tagline from me of sorts, get as offended as you like. I am not here to not offend people. I am here to tell people the harsh truth of what is actually taking place in our world. My presentation style, style is often extremely intense and at times even combative, even outrightly combative. I won't sugarcoat my words or delivery. Some people may become upset at things I'm going to say here today. So be it. Feel those emotions and let them flow through you and experience them in their fullness. However, realize that that will never make what I say untrue. Don't fall for emotional mind control or judging the truthfulness of information based on how you feel when first hearing it. Truth by its very nature wages war against all forms of deception and mind control. I don't, prevent, I don't present this information to be liked, to be popular, to make money, or to make friends. I speak publicly as a result of a moral obligation because of what I know to be happening in our world. I speak publicly to teach that to other people so that they may become informed themselves and take action and do something about it. That also being said, there is nothing new here today in this presentation. You will not be seeing or hearing or experiencing really anything new. It may be new to you, but this information has always been here. As the old saying goes, there is nothing new under the sun. Okay. This means that truth is eternal. It has always been here and it always will be here. The problem is that the government controlled mainstream media wants us to associate that which is new or the news in other words with that which is true and as we all should know by this point in time nothing could be further from the truth the news isn't telling us what is true it is just presenting that which is quote unquote new to us so we you know want to latch on to the new stuff this is a mind control technique okay it doesn't matter whether something is new or not or whether it's been around for eternity all that matters is whether it is true. And that's what I endeavor to do here today to speak the truth and help people to understand the truth. So let's continue. What we are in the midst of right now at this point in human history is a socially engineered perceived crisis. Now, as a result of this and as a result of subsequent events, many other events are taking place as well. But this presentation is largely going to focus on the quote unquote pandemic that we were the uh, that we are currently in, namely the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. I want to introduce what may be a new term for some viewers or listeners, and that is a socially engineered perceived crisis. See, the crisis that we are in is highly orchestrated and it's a managed large scale event. It's designed to steer the mental perceptions of large amounts of the population in a specific direction, which is specifically dictated by the social engineers of our world. In other words, the ruling class of our world, the mind controllers of our world, the dark occultists of our world. This is a perception management crisis. The crisis, yes, th there is an actual disease, regardless of what you want to consider, the origins of it, the nature of it, the vectors of it, those are for another 
you know, uh, time to explore and to flesh out. For the, the purpose of this presentation, I'm just trying to get people to understand that this entire event is a managed crisis of perception to make it seem much more dangerous than it actually is. But in addition to sickness and death and the worldwide economic devastation, this crisis of perception is designed to create fear, trauma, cowardice, inaction, mistrust, division, and submission. Ultimate submission is what is, it is designed to create. And it is working beautifully, unfortunately. And that is because people still tune in to the talking heads on the mainstream media. They still are listening to what so-called experts have to say and believing and hanging on their every word as truth. Okay, and they're falling into a consciousness of fear and division as a result. Nothing has really changed in the last several decades, really the last several centuries or several millennia. People are still easily led and easily mind controlled by the social engineer ruling class. So the mainstream media, they're telling people whatever the ruling class wants them to think and believe, and it's working beautifully because consciousness has still not evolved to a level of understanding that these people are paid liars and they are trying to steer human consciousness in the direction that the ruling class wants it to go. See, and that's what this whole conference is about, understanding that there are other perspectives on what is taking place, and they are just as valid as the quote-unquote mainstream perspective. As a matter of fact, they're far more valid than the mainstream perspective. But the media is doing its job of instilling fear into the human population, and they're buying it largely hook, line, and sinker. A small percentage of people aren't buying it. And they are trying to put out an alternative narrative. And then as a result, the ruling class is trying to block that narrative from being understood by the majority of people. The majority of people are television watchers. They're still tuning into the mainstream nightly news for their information and government websites for their related websites for their information. And unfortunately, that means that most of them are buying into this perceived crisis, this perceived managed, socially engineered crisis. We have to disconnect from that mainstream information and take information in from a wide and eclectic variety of sources before coming to a conclusion about what is really taking place and by applying a true truth discovery methodology, namely the trivium, to understand what's really happening. Most people aren't doing that. They're acting from a place of belief, as we're going to talk about in this presentation. My question to the viewing audience to help you guys who are mostly awake to what is taking place to, I want you to understand what your work is to do. And most people still really don't understand what your great work is to do. It isn't just to absorb information. It's to understand how many asleep people there are out there and go to work on trying to wake them up by putting information out into the world. And far too few people are doing that. How many people in the world still completely believe the official government and mainstream media narrative? I say it's far upwards of over 95% of the population. And why? Why is that? It's because we as allegedly conscious people aren't doing our work that we are here to do. The very understanding that the overwhelming vast majority of the human population has accepted the media hype about this quote unquote pandemic is the exact dynamic that should show those who consider themselves awake what their own work is to do. And sadly, most people haven't transitioned into a place from a place of knowledge into a place of right action, applying that knowledge in the right way. That's what the great work is to do, folks. And more people have to understand that that's what the great work is and start doing it. Not just talking about, you know, I'm awake or I know what's going on, you know, and just be being satisfied with the knowledge that you have, but transitioning that into right action through teaching others. Not just shying away and saying, oh, you have your perspective. You have to put the word out there. The universe is spoken into existence. The more we speak the truth out into the world, the more the reality around us will change because people's behavior is based upon their perception. And if we start 
to inform their perception, their behavior will change for the better and the world will change for the better as a result. That's how our reality collectively in the aggregate is actually built. Believers of the mainstream media narrative possess all of the hallmarks hallmark characteristics of a religious cult. And we need to stop being like dancing around this topic and calling it what it is. It's a cult. These people are in a cult. Stop sugarcoating the words. It's, it's not just their perspective. It's a managed perspective that is socially engineered to drive behavior in a certain direction by the dark occultists who rule our society. That is the definition of inculcating people into a cult belief system. And most of them are right there. And here are the characteristics of their mindset. Blind belief without verification through a real truth discovery methodology. They listen to the news, they listen to the government narrative, they listen to the mainstream media narrative, and they accept it on blind faith. They have no first-hand knowledge whether scientifically or with life experience of anything that is actually happening, they simply accept what is being told to them. They have no actual skepticism of quote unquote officials and quote unquote experts. They'll say that they're skeptical people or non-religious people, but nothing could be further from the truth. They are actually true believers. Because if an official says it or an expert says it, well, then it absolutely must be true. And it doesn't require the application of my skepticism or actual independent research. I could just accept it on my blind faith. That's the hallmarks of religion, ladies and gentlemen. And these will be the first type of people that will tell you they have no religion. And they're absolutely full of crap. They have a religious belief that is a cult belief system. And the final characteristic of this mindset, non-believers of their cult belief system must be shamed or punished. And that's what we're seeing actively taking place in the world around us. Those who don't accept their worldview and don't accept their version of the narrative that is being pushed off onto us by the mainstream media, they have to be shamed and ultimately punished and have their rights taken away. And it's time for us to speak up about this and say we're not going to accept it. Another part of these true believers mindset is the belief in a superior class. They believe that the dogmatic experts that are telling us what we must believe and that we have no other choice to believe this narrative are comprise a superior class of human beings to the average person. They are the medical so-called medical experts, the mainstream media, the gover governors and government agents and people, you know, in positions of power. And then so-called experts and pundits, you know, from uh, non-governmental organizations that really don't even have uh, true, you know, experience in, in any fields of research that they are, are alleged that they have. You know, the, the Gates have no experience in actual health research. You know, they're just foundation money collectors. That's all they really are, you know. And hey, they're going to believe people from the mainstream media, you know. Here, go, go to the slide. Look at look at the upper right hand corner. These people here, you know, from all the mainstream media outlets. These are the same people that told us that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. And we were going to see that evidence being born in the form of a mushroom cloud. Don't you remember that? But now all of a sudden we could take them at their word and they're speaking gospel truth. I mean, please, it's laughable is what it is. But see, this isn't just belief in a superior class, ladies and gentlemen. What it really is, if we go back to the slide here, it's a belief in a master class. That's really what it is. Let's not mince words and give euphemisms even. It's not just that they think these people are superior to other people. It's they think that there are masters. That's what this worldview really is all about. They believe in a master class and an inferior slave class that must obey their edicts and dictates. They believe that the master class has the quote unquote right to command others. This is part of this cult mentality that is actually perpetrating what I'm going to get to and explain as worldview violence. 
Imagine people like the governors of different states in the United States believing that they are our commanders, our governors, our controllers, that they can dictate by their voice alone and their the stroke of a pen what people may or may not do in their own lives. Imagine they think they're kings and rulers and masters of other people. And people believe this claim that's called authority in government. It's the belief that the master class has the right to command others. See, what people, the logical fallacy that the average human being makes, and even some people in the so-called alleged freedom movement, it's no such thing as the freedom movement, it's a my freedom movement, ladies and gentlemen, they, they believe they, never, they believe in this thing called authority, but they never actually take a step back and apply the behavior in question to themselves. This is what you have to do. Take a step back and apply the behavior in question, namely the right to command other people, the right to rule others, the right to dictate to others, to yourself. Imagine, do you believe you have that right to go out and command others what they may do in, in their lives, regardless of what health condition may be present or not? You believe you are the commander and ruler of other people? Of course, if you're really being honest with yourself, you don't think you're the ruler or commander of others? Well, then how did other people get that right if no one themselves as an individual has it? And it is true. No one has that right. You know, when, when we want to really look at it and get down to the bottom level of it, the problem is people's ego is in the way from understanding this. They don't want to admit that they were wrong. They don't want to admit that they were duped. And that's what the force of the out of control ego is. It's people's heart and ego and their rigid dogmatic belief system actually blocks them from seeing, hearing and understanding and acknowledging the truth that no one has the right to command others. See, you apply the behavior to yourself, this belief that a master class has the right to rule and command others. And inevitably, if you are being honest with yourself, you will come to the conclusion stepping back to the slide, please, that ultimately there is no such right. No one has the right to command others. No one as an individual has the right to command others. So this right cannot be granted to or delegated to anyone else in the world. That makes the whole concept of government become instantly illegitimate, morally illegitimate on its face. There is no such thing as the moral right to rule or command others. And anybody who thinks that there is such a right is under an illusion of a diseased mind. Their mind is sick and they are under a religious cult delusion. And that is how we have to say it to them. People don't want to hear that, but it's irrelevant whether they don't want to hear it. We have the right to speak it because it is the truth. There is no such thing as the right to command. The problem is they're trying to reverse it and say, we don't have the right to challenge that through our speech. See, we're in a state where slavery has been accepted wholesale. And there are people who believe that the ruling class has the legitimate moral right to rule and other people are legitimately their slaves. This is really where we're at in humanity worldwide. And the vast majority of people have accepted that paradigm. And what it is, is a cult, religious belief system that is completely false, completely erroneous. There's not enough people speaking out in courage that that is a false paradigm and belief system. This is what the message that we have to put out there to this body of the population that still believes the mainstream media narrative and still believes the government narrative to believe in authority is to condone slavery. That is exactly what it is. Stop sugarcoating it and start saying what it is to other people to believe in authority is to condone slavery. If you are a believer in authority and you are a b believer that there is moral legitimacy to government, you are someone who is saying, I believe in and condone slavery because that is what the right to command and rule other people is. It is slavery and that is what government is on its face. And I will not sugarcoat that that is what it is. I'm here to put that out there as the plain and simple truth and encourage others to do the same. There is no such thing as the right to rule or command others. And we have to stop believing that there is because to even believe it is to condone slavery. And it's completely immoral and it's completely based on violence. 
So now what's happening is that the narrative of this masterclass is being said never to be questioned. It is not to be questioned by members of the slave class. This is what all this social shaming is all about by the members of the cult. See, the cult members want to point fingers at other people who don't believe their worldview of authority, their authoritative, authoritarian worldview. You know, they want to say, oh, shame on you. No, not shame on us. Shame on you for accepting that slavery is morally legitimate. How about that? That's how the tables have to be turned. Your worldview is false and illegitimate morally on its face. And now big tech companies, big tech corporations are trying to make it impossible to get the word out by censoring social media and censoring people and deplatforming them. And all that's going to do is incite very, very dark days ahead, let's just say. It's already turning in that direction because of how people have been oppressed. And people don't understand what's, it, it's a powder keg. It's not just a powder keg here in America, folks. It's a powder keg worldwide. And you better psychologically prepare yourself. And I'm telling everybody out there, it's because most people who say they're for the truth and for freedom didn't do their work. They failed at their job. To morally educate the public, there is not enough of the voice of truth the reality is spoken into existence, ladies and gentlemen. The universe is spoken into existence. What we experience in our daily reality, in the aggregate, in the collective, is based upon what people said, what people accepted into them, the information they took in, and that is what informed their behavior. And now what the ruling class wants to do is try to make it impossible to get that word out there, and they are going to ensure a violent outcome as a result of that. That's what I have been trying to prevent from day one, and that is what I've been trying to tell my viewership and listenership, that it is your personal responsibility through your actions to help prevent by teaching people true morality. And unfortunately, we're failing in that job. Collectively, we're failing in that job, and you're going to see the result of that failure in the physical world. This cult believes that they have the right to force their worldview upon others, to force their belief in authority, to force... There, see, they think that there is no alternative view about viruses in general. I'm not even going to get into that here today to talk about, again, what the nature of it may be, what the reality of that may be. That's a whole nother presentation in scope and scale. And there's not enough time to do that here today. Okay? I'm just explaining, these people believe that all alternative viewpoints of reality, perspectives of reality, are to be banned and banished and even possibly made illegal. Okay? And people who don't accept their worldview as it is put out there by the mainstream media and the government and other quote unquote officials or quote unquote experts is not to be challenged. And they are to have their rights stripped from them if they don't accept that worldview. Well, I don't accept your worldview. I believe my knowledge is far superior to yours. And I'm not afraid to tell you that. My re. It, Look, I've said it before on my show, folks, the amount of knowledge and research I have taken in is actually frightening. I'm going to show it to people on my show one day. You think the, for those who have ever received the arc drive that I offer, it's nothing. It's nothing in what I've taken in, actually. I will show you the totality of what I've amassed as far as knowledge is concerned. I'm not going to have ignorant people who just believe the mainstream media without actually looking into the depth of information that is available for themselves to tell me how I must inform my worldview. Quite frankly, I'm far more intelligent than them. Quite frankly, I'm far more informed than them. And I'm not afraid to say it just like that. You're not going to command what my worldview must be. I don't accept that. And you're not going to strip my rights as a result. And that's what the, that's the attitude we need to take regarding this. Dumb people who believe the media and government are going to, aren't going to inform my worldview because they say so and they try to push it off on me and then tell me my rights are going to be stripped as a result. Quite frankly, you don't know what I know. Quite frankly, you haven't studied what I've studied. Quite frankly, you haven't taken in the un unimaginable amount of knowledge I've taken in. And I'll tell it to you just like that. 
Because what this is is a form of violence. It's a form of indirect violence, but then it ultimately comes down to them stripping people's rights and becoming a form of direct violence. And let's go back to the slide because I want to show people what this actually is. See, the real reality of this is, is no one has the right to force a worldview upon others. We have the right to speak what the truth is. I can't ultimately force it on anybody. I could just show an ignorant person how they've been deceived. But just like I can't force my worldview on other people, no one can force their worldview on me or others. It's a form of violence to do that. And that's what I am calling here today worldview violence. This is worldview violence, ladies and gentlemen. It's saying you must accept my worldview. And if you don't, I will support the stripping away of your rights. Are we going to tolerate that? We're going to say other people have the right to command how we must see reality and that we may not have an alternative perspective of reality? Well, I'll leave that for the viewing audience to ponder and consider. Are you going to accept that in your life? Because I know my answer. I'm not accepting that. I'm not accepting that no matter what it comes down to, even if it comes down to physical altercation, so be it. But you will not tell me what I must think. You will not tell me what I must believe. You will not tell me that my years of study and knowledge are inferior to something a piece of trash paid liar on the television told me. I don't accept that. And neither should you. Because here's the truth of the matter, folks. Government, media, religion, doctors, and even scientists are not the arbiters of truth. Truth exists independently of any human being's perception of it. It is our goal to bring our perception into alignment with that which is, namely the truth. And we have to do that through a rigid truth discovery methodology and taking in high volumes of eclectic information from all over many different sources, even those we don't ag agree with. Putting them all together, logically weeding out all inconsistencies so that we distill it down to the base essence of that which is true. And only then can we say we have an accurate understanding of what is taking place. And most people do not do that process. Ladies and gentlemen, I do do that process and I'm not going to have people that don't do it tell me what I must believe because an expert said it. I will perform the truth discovery methodology process on the information myself and come to my own conclusion about it and so should everyone else so no one's going to tell me other people are, are the arbiters of truth no one is the arbiter of truth not even me not you not anyone in, as an individual the truth exists independently of our perception it is our goal to align our perception with the truth or with that which is Secondly, the conclusion is, conclusions of government, media, religion, doctors, and scientists cannot be violently pushed upon others. That is called worldview violence. That is what I stand against. I stand against all forms of violence. I want there to be voluntary interaction among human beings. That is why I am a voluntarist slash anarchist. It means no rulers, no masters, no one acting as a commander of others, no one acting as a ruler of others. There are still rules which are called natural law, which are the moral laws of the universe. But there are no rulers. There is not a ruling class and there is not a slave class. And that is what the people out there in our world today believe there is. And they believe there's moral legitimacy to it. Their conclusions do not mean that it is the truth. And their conclusions cannot be violently pushed upon others. That is what is unfortunately taking place in our world. And we need to apply the name to it. It's called worldview violence. And it should not be accepted any more than physical violence should because worldview violence is going to lead to physical violence and lead to the stripping away of human rights. And we cannot allow that to happen. Let's jump into the second portion of the presentation here today, the real pandemics. So I've covered what I want to talk with you today about worldview violence and what it is. 
Now let's talk about the real pandemics in our society. And oh, there are many real pandemics. They're not what most people think that they are, but they are very real pandemics taking place in our world. And they are worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. They are not isolated pockets of illness in the human psyche. They are worldwide pandemics for sure. So let's jump into what these are the lack of spirituality, the lack of true spirituality is probably the number one worldwide pandemic. And people will hear this and they'll say, oh, that's a religious statement. No, it isn't. I stand against organized religion. I stand against dogmatic religion. You know, I don't believe any of that is true. I don't believe in atheism either. These are two false paradigms. As I've said over and over again on this show, it's a dialectic. It's a conscious, a dialectic in consciousness to keep people away from the truth. Both of these paradigms are designed mental schisms. It's a designed mental schism, a socially engineered mental schism. And this is known as the Hegelian dialectic to keep a lack of true spirituality in most people's life. Okay, that's what it is designed to do. And that's where we're at. This is a pandemic. Most people lack any form of true spirituality in their life, whether they are left brain dominant atheists whose worldview characteristics are that they believe matter is primary and that there's no such thing as God or spirit, that the material world is all there is, that only physical laws exist, but there are no laws that govern behavioral consequence, namely natural law that science, quote unquote, is the arbiter of truth, not real science or real truth discovery, but science as comes down from official government funded science and scientific institutions. And the consciousness is either purely mechanical or meaningless altogether. A totally left brain dominant worldview that is not going to get anyone closer to the truth by one iota. Okay, not by one sliver. And then we have the right brain dominant religionist, you know, who believes in any of the organized religious dogmas of the world and believes that their worldview characteristics are that they believe spirit is primary and God is all powerful. The material world is evil or should be aesthetically shunned. God demands strict human obedience to his arbitrary and often conflicting set of rules and the goals and goals in the physical world shouldn't be even focused on because rather we should focus on the promised afterlife with God. So ultimately in this worldview, meaning uh, action becomes meaningless. You see, both of these are to get people to basically get no closer to the truth. They're designed to steer people away from the truth and they're ultimately designed to steer people into cul-de-sacs of meaningless action or inaction altogether. That is what they, these two worldviews are designed to do and keep people with no true spirituality. The next real pandemic is the pandemic of fear. And that's what we're seeing play out in our world in a huge way. People with no knowledge, just completely giving into fear. And the biggest fear is fear of the unknown because fear of the unknown is what holds people back from knowledge and higher awareness. See, if you fear knowledge because you fear what you might discover, it is going to create a feedback loop of fear because fear comes from lack of knowledge. Those who are informed are not in fear. Does it sound like I'm in a state of fear, ladies and gentlemen? The reason I'm not in a state of fear is because I'm in an extremely high level of knowledge and awareness. And when you're in an extremely high level of knowledge and awareness, you need fear nothing. Ignorance is what creates fear. Refusal of truth is what creates fear. I have no such fear because I've accepted what truth is and I've aligned my perception to it. But we're, here's where we're at, folks, societally. So it's not the coronavirus that is scary. It's how brainwashed and easily manipulated the masses of people can become. Truer words were never spoken. You know, that's what we really should be concerned about. And guess what? We could, could be doing something about it, but how many of us are? Okay. You know, we could be stepping up and trying to morally educate people, but you know what? That, that voice, that chorus of voices is extremely weak compared to the amount of voices that are constantly speaking the lie to everyone within earshot. 
That's all you got to do is ask yourself, which voice is more omnipresent and the loudest and the most powerful? Is it the voice of truth or is it the voice of deception and lies? And I think if you're being honest with yourself, you will answer that question honestly and truthfully. Ignorance is the next pandemic. Again, it's the thing that leads people into deeper and deeper states of fear, which is what holds consciousness back. Ignorance is the refusal of truth, which leads to cowardice and inaction. You know, in this whole alleged virus pandemic, I have tried to give people like information and books and videos to watch. You know, I've sent people links to the Invisible Rainbow book by Arthur Furstenberg, which talks about, you know, how diseases really develop in the body, how we are electrical beings, how, you know, uh, things turn on or off in the body, depending on environment and depending on toxicity around the body. Hardly anybody will read it. Hardly anybody will look into it. I've tried to have, have discussions with people after sending them documents like this or what, or the book called what really makes you ill, why everything you thought you knew about disease is wrong. Ask people, please look into some of this. Let's have a discussion on it. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. You know, I've read these and tried to understand what the authors are saying, what they're putting forward as an alternative worldview. And I'd like to have a discussion on it. People won't even look into it. That's called ignorance. That's called thinking, you know, enough, thinking you've been informed enough and your ego being in the way of you taking in new information. Whether you accept it or not is irrelevant. It's taking it in first. That is your job. Looking at an other perspective, then making up your mind through a truth discovery process about whether it's accurate or not. Most people won't even go through the first step of the trivium, which is get the information first. That's the grammar step, which has to come first. You can't put anything before grammar. And look, we could talk about 10,000 books on the topic. These are just two I decided to put on my slide because I think they're excellent ones. You know, how many people are doing this? All too few is the answer, folks. All too few. And that's the problem. So they're staying in that place of ignorance and that keeps driving their fear. And what does it lead to? It leads to inaction because people aren't informed and they have no courage. They lack any sense of courage in their life. Cowardice is the next real pandemic that we are experiencing. And it's everywhere. You see people cowering in, as I like to call it, cowering under the staircase in the kingdom of the self. They don't just have coward to act, cowardice to act externally to apply will, willpower in the world. They don't even have, ca ca they don't even have courage internally in their own self. They haven't developed it to look at what's true and challenge their own worldview and belief system because ultimately they're cowards of what they may find and they don't want the responsibility that goes along with knowing. And I've said it a million times, folks, God hates cowardice. Call God whatever you want. I don't give a damn if you're uncomfortable with that term. Call it creation. Call it the underlying intelligence in the universe. Doesn't make a difference with what you call it. The force which put all the laws of the universe into effect, including behavioral laws of the universe or moral laws of the universe, hates cowardice. And there's a reason. It wants evolutionary progress in consciousness to move forward. It wants to evolve. The universe wants to evolve. And cowardice is the force which, one of the forces, one of the biggest forces which stagnates evolutionary progress in consciousness. The universe hates cowardice. The universe hates cowards. And I just like to challenge even the viewing audience at the risk of even insulting anyone, folks. Get as offended as you like. How many of you have courageously put the word out there publicly with your real name on it? I'd suggest less than 1%. Okay? I'm going to scream loud and proud. My name is Mark Passio of what on earth is happening.com. And I'm going to provide testimony to the truth of what is taking place in our world right here and now on our planet. That's my real name. And I'm not afraid. You know how many people are actually doing that? A piss ant few. Okay. That's the answer. A piss in a pot, tiny little, little droplet, and it's not good enough. It's not good enough. 
We should be doing way better and way more at this time period and not leaving it to so-called experts. Don't even leave it to me. I should be drowned out in a, in a sea, of course, of voices teaching natural law by this point. Okay? When I'm one of the handful doing it. And I mean a handful. At best. The ancient philosopher Thucydides said that the society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting by fools. And we're there, folks. This is that time of judgment where we are there. So many people who consider themselves well-informed are total cowards. And the people who have, are absolute know-nothing, just jar-headed, just shit for brains, actually are out there saying that they're going to do the fighting on behalf of society. I mean, you guys are utter jar-head clowns. Okay? And the people who believe that you're fighting for our freedom are even bigger clowns. Apathy is the next worldview pandemic. It's really the, the final one of all. This is the one that really makes the slavery system continue and perpetuate. Now, most of this listening audience, viewing audience, is not in a state of apathy. You guys do care about what's going on. The problem is you need to convert that care into right action, into courage and right action by putting your voices out there publicly and not being afraid. Make the people who are claiming authority as real afraid. Okay? We need to turn the tables and they need to be afraid. Okay? First of all, they are afraid of the truth. They're afraid of the truth getting out there that their whole system's a big crock of crap and never had any moral legitimacy to it. But apathy is the next big pandemic. And it is the death of care to say, I don't care about what's going on, to say, I don't care about the loss of freedoms, is what perpetuates humanity enslavement and keeps us in the prison as an entire world, as an entire species. I don't care creates the prison for everyone. It creates the prison planet. These two images are exactly equal. It's a mathematic equation that works that way 100% of the time fl flawlessly according to law in the universe. I don't care creates a prison for us all. So in the last couple minutes, let's get into what I call solutions. It, it's actual spiritual solutions. This is a spiritual problem. Let's look at what the real solutions are. We need a development worldwide of true spirituality, not atheism, not the rejection of all spirituality, not the rejection of the spiritual aspect of our being, but also not rigid, organized religious dogmatism. But neither one of those things leads to the truth. They are dialectics to divide people and keep them away from the truth. Real spirituality, first and foremost, the first tenet of real spirituality is that it cannot include the belief in the moral legitimacy of authority and government. And if there's not enough time to just fl entirely flesh out this dynamic in this short presentation, this is a short form presentation, folks, can't get to it all in one. But I go into this extensively in my seminars called Natural Law, the Real Law of Attraction and How to Apply It in Your Life and Streetwise Spirituality. What does it truly mean to be awake? And if you're new to my work or you haven't watched these seminars, you need to watch them in their entirety, perhaps multiple times, and really absorb the knowledge deeply that is in these two seminars. Because so this is what self-mastery is all about. Understanding the laws of the universe, understanding natural law, and then actually applying that true spirituality in one's life through our behaviors, through our actions, in the right way, through right action. The next way out of these real pandemics is self-respect. True respect, true looking again at, at the qualities of our self as an individual. Self-respect is the true healer. You want to cure the real pandemic? You want to cure the real human sickness? Then apply the true healer, which is self-respect first and foremost. This is the development of internal courage to look at the truth and then to speak the truth publicly. Not just to your family and friends where you think it's safe. 
It needs to be out there publicly in a courageous way where you're telling people, I'm not afraid. You know, here's a self-respect starter kit for the viewing audience, uh, for anybody listening. Okay. And I know a lot of the people who are, are, you know, in attendance at this conference here today, virtually have already done these things, but I'm talking about for anyone watching after the fact, you know, through the recorded presentation on the internet, turn off the lying, fear mongering state controlled media. It is an affront to self-respect. Stop believing that others have the right to command you. There is no such right. There is so much moral right. So that's my timer to say, wrap it up. So let's get to the last thing. It's the development of true courage. Okay. This is the way out of the real pandemic folks. True courage. Courage is the universe's protection. It's universal protection. We talk about, you know, protective equipment, you know, to, to shield us from illness. This is the real universal protection to shield us from spiritual illness. That's what courage is. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. The people who are stepping up, the people who are saying, no, we're not going to have this. We're going to go back to our lives. We're not going to take government mandates. We're not going to take government commands because you don't have the right to command us. We are free and we're going to act like it. You know, stepping into that kind of courage creates the universe's protection. I'm protected because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of what can be done to me in the physical domain. And you know what real protection is going to come in the form of stepping into the courage to teach natural law. You want to talk about an even much higher, much higher level of protection. People say to me, Mark, are you afraid what these people might do to you? Not a bit, not for a second. They better be afraid of what, if it comes down to physical altercation, I'll do or other people who are going to defend their rights and freedom will do. Okay. They're, I'm not afraid of what they're going to do. Okay. And you know why? I have the protection of universal law. I have the protection of the creator of the universe. You want to say that's a religious statement? No, absolutely it is not. That's a spiritual understanding. If you exercise courage for the right things and you teach the right things and you teach natural law, mighty forces of creation will come to your assistance and aid in your life, in all your endeavors. And that is where my protection comes from. We don't want it to come down to the lost word, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the last word. That's why we have to say the lost word. Okay. We want to say the lost word. We don't want it to have to come down to the last word of physical rebellion because it's rapidly going in that direction. And that's going to get very, very messy. That doesn't go with surgical precision, ladies and gentlemen, that goes with extreme messiness. And a lot of innocents get caught up in that. Okay, if you study history, you will understand that. So we have to say the lost word, which is no, and we need to fall in love with it. This is the lost word. We have to say no to evil. We have to say no to authoritarianism. We have to say no to worldview violence. We have to say no to external control. No one has the right to externally control, rule, or command us. And we need to fall in love with that word. That is a vibratory energy of courage and protection. The word no. No, you don't own me. No, I am not your slave. No, you don't have the right to command me and others. No one does. So folks, it looks like this, the lost word. Through the knowledge of natural law, a truly awakened human being is finally able to speak the lost word, which is no. No is the word of all power. And only when we say no to those who would claim to be our owners, do we stop externalizing our power and in doing so reclaim all of our natural rights. Defeating the real pandemics which plague humanity requires the development and application of true knowledge, true care, and true courage. And that happens when we start to say no to those who would claim to be the rulers of our lives. And when you look at the word no, ladies and gentlemen, you realize it's just another form of the word on. It's just on flipped upside down. Because when we say the lost word no to those who consider themselves our authority, we are truly embracing and turning on the light inside each and every one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and attention.